1945, Max's Bar and Cafe was one of the first structures in the suburbs of Quezon City. By the early 1950s, local customers started visiting Max's restaurant for their famous fried chicken and to celebrate their special occasions. The first renovation included the signage of Max's, which was made prominent in the facade of the structure. The second renovation in the late 1950s was an expansion to include the former residences of the Trotta family, one of the original owners of Max's. Between the late 1950s to the early 1960s, a major renovation was done, giving the facade a distinctly Malay roofline and used the iconic two dancing chickens to figure notably on the new facade. Max's has evolved from a simple mom-and-pop, family-run restaurant into one of the best-loved brands in the Philippines and abroad. Along with the evolution of business processes and scale, Max's has incorporated a unified look that would identify the establishment and the brand. By the start of the millennium, Max's partnered with designers Buji Layog and architect Royal Pineda to translate the vision of the company to merge tradition and dynamism to be undeniably Filipino in the core values of family and hospitality, while responding to the evolving tastes of the contemporary Filipino dinner. The idea of working with an architecture that's very, again, memorable for the family. So what I, I kept was really more of the bones and the, the external architecture, but before it was a room up there and then solid rooms below, low ceilings, and definitely that you cannot, I mean, I could reach the ceiling of the ground floor. So what I did there is again the principle of what the, the Bahai Kubo is, it's all about openness, it's about permeability. So we, we made the whole ceiling high to present the roof pitch that you see from the inside. Before you will not see that 
from the inside because what you see is a ceiling. But now you appreciate the architecture from outside and also from the inside because you see now the silhouette. And again, now you can see the height of the trees, the openness of the spaces of the garden, and uh, I simplified everything with the dark wood finish and really made it very light as a, as a structural element. So, presenting a modern take for that total interior renovation and the architectural refinement, I think it was a very, a very exciting and successful one. No? Because, again, what we didn't want to do is to lose the history and then you try to dissolve it with so many of the present. So what we're able to do is actually just present the history, in fact, highlight it more, and then simplify. Simplify everything that was really added in the place. And, and then I, I think that that made the whole walk and the experience in that place very, I would say, to the point that entertaining because when you just sit down in the dining place you can just stare at the ceiling you can just look at the garden and and there's that thing that you, you tell yourself there's something about the space that makes you feel good so i think that's that's one of the major items that i maxis has gone a long way over 75 years of their existence from serving steaks, sandwiches, and drinks at Max's Bar and Cafe to their now world-famous Max's Fried Chicken. It has gone numerous renovation works to reflect a truly Filipino brand where family and friends get together for simple gatherings or to celebrate momentous occasions, creating memories that would last a lifetime.
Okay, I'm very lit some more than that. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Raymond drink. No. Yo wala muna. Yo wala muna. Yo. All right, so major late at the schedule. Um, I'm glad everyone is here. There are a few familiar faces to uh, attend, and new faces then. Uh, so, right at this point, what do you think then? And I'm sure mga gutom na kayo. Si Eki, nung natin yung gutom, parang yung food, hindi ko gagal. <laughs> Ayan. So, welcome everyone to our September general membership meeting. Meron na ito ko tomo doon. Ayan, sir. 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 Tama, tama. Tama yan, sir. Kapag kanina pa yan, eh. Okay. So, um, before we start any activity, of course, let's, um, Start with a few standard protocols. All right. May I invite everyone to please rise for the TikTok challenge, <laughs> Philippine national anthem. All right. What you? I <laughs>
Okay, thank you everyone. Pero remain standing muna tayo. The direction tayo sa blessing of the food. Para maka-hire rin tayo. Or, um, uh, let us remind ourselves that we are in the loving presence of God. And the Son of the Spirit. Amen. Lord, we thank you very much for this day, for a rainy night. Panginoon, maraming maraming salamat for guiding us here safely. Um, we thank you, Lord, for um, giving us today this time, fixing our schedule to, to attend this activity and to see our new and old volumes. Uh, the same breath, Lord, we thank you for giving us our speaker for tonight. Thank you for needing him to be present today. Um, also, Lord, we raise up to you, you safety to mga kasama namin sa chapter na papunta ko dito, ko Lord, may you guide their way. Um, that's their way para we can save sila and also yung mga families namin, Lord, na hindi ko namin sa bahay. With this kind of weather, Lord, um, kayo na po po ng bahala sa mga Lord. Lord, we thank you for the food that we are about to receive. As we pray, bless us, O Lord, and the side gifts which you are about to receive and thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Alright, um, beer done. So, kita nyo naman, medyo kalay po yung setting natin. You can eat in your seats or find tables. Yun. And then in a few minutes, we'll start our transitions. Green architecture to responsible architecture. Talk with architect Mike Guerrero. Cheers! Yeah. Yeah.
Okay, kahit ka muna. Okay, now just we focus So you're like a program manager for this. Well, that is my title. <laughs> oh, okay. The VP program. Ah, so all, all the seminars are like on top of it, more or less. I hope I, I, I strive to be, but sometimes I be. Yeah. <laughs> While you're young, give it all you can. Make it fun. <laughs> I fought for it in the jury. Well, at least it gave the idol. Ah, okay. Then, you know, so that one. Yes. What are they still together? Yes. 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 That's a good concept. I was hoping that would be change the parameters of the way we design communities. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That the main house in Compton is under BCD or Clark Green City. Look, Clark City. Housing. So, you know, I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to not four P program, whatever. Yeah. So this would that that solution which was won the first prize. Yeah, I like this like the road network is there, but you have the buildings finding the whole complex. On top of the roads, okay. so that you can move to the whole complex without even touching the road. You can go all over. Uh, it's a different thing. Because the, the tradition, traditional one is doing the roads, subdividing the lands, and putting the house structures. But then you have to cross all the time. Actually, at the end, at the end of the judging, just for AK got me said, "Okay, anyway, that's one of the jury." In the there were two final ones. One was the traditional 
Big debate. But I was siding with this new one. And I told them, well, if you want to change the parameters of designing uh, housing, then and showcasing a different idea, then this, this would be something different. Something <laughs> Yeah, because if you do if you go to the other one then what's the difference yes, between yeah. this and all the other housing developments so yeah yeah in uh saudi so saudi 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 I don't like it. It's crazy. <laughs> it you think. It makes you think, but I don't like it. Am I gonna live live there? I mean, you reflection. Yeah. It's a sad. What do you? You know, I mean that. I see. There's another one. You. Is a hadi yung parang ng skyscraper sa building yung crystal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hindi pa homework sa students ko. Parang would you live there? Online na. Ah, and fair. Ah, di ka sarong si Kong. Okay, okay. I think it's parang ano lang kasi pang cloud lang siguro sa mga yeah. So sobrang daming mga parang architects ang nagaano doon sa ano yun, binabash nila yung mga grabe, why are you so, sino ba yun? Maraming architects involved, di ba? Sina pati si yung African na ano, si British African, si si Ajaye, nandun siya, Ajaye, si ano, lahat na doon, more foxes, but of the, na ano. But you, you know, what if it's like the new Eiffel Tower? Uh, sabi nga nila, parang yun, parang yung oil money. Yun, For sure. <laughs> Pwede rin naman. Yeah, so, what about Earth's resources? Actually, yung SDMA project sa water site, parang I forgot the name. Yeah, parang the, the something. Parang ganun na. Pero as I heard yung mga design directors yata na yung parang sobrang stressful nung yung Arab na para project ano doon, head doon. Like yung fire fight parang yung mga expats talaga ang bilis ng turnover na ito. Super laki ng sahod pero siguro mga few months lang ang ano. Kasi sobrang demanding raw nung si Sam Sam Payet Payet something. Hindi yung Prince, yung, yung ano ng Prince, yung assistant ng Prince to oversee ni yung yeah, I know. And it's like totally parang super layo nung area dun sa, sa nearest sa Jeddah. So, sobrang isolated. Parang siyang Perth. Parang ganun. Yung neon, neon pa rin. Sobrang layo lang nung ano yun. Parang it's like a barren wasteland. Bigla nila nilagyan ng something. I'm not familiar with neon. 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 It's, it's the... Project, yeah. you know, the, the line. Uh, yeah, the line. Uh, the line uh, the, uh, yeah, project, yeah. Like, okay. What is the other four? Mason Ski Slope. Na parang, uh, in sand? No, in the inner side of the mountain. Na parang, parang may super, super, super high rise skyscraper sa side ng mountain. <laughs> Tapos may isa yung dun sa. Hexagon, the, hexagon. the hexagon. The hexagon. Niya. Parang it's a reclamation. Ano na, may parang yung C eh, yung Arab C, may parang like a question to it. So, I, I don't know the others. Super, super ambitious. Pero super yung ano. Make my dreams come true. Yung mga, yung mga salary range doon, grabe. Yung mga sa, yung, yung sa SJ, alam ko, nag-hire sila dati. Patusin ko kaya ako, sabi ko, mag-attack, mag-attack, mag-attack. Talaga. Oo, mga parang unbelievably, naka ano siya eh. I think you will be housed sa mga parang mga shelter style na may parang community na expats na doon lang yung pera. Hindi pa siya talaga yung may mga villas, wala, parang mostly ano lang. 
Para mga junior architect, mga 300 plus thousand starting pa. Oh my God, shoot na din, shoot na. What more kung mga ano pa. Pero yung turnover rate ng mga foreign para project, ano na parang English. Super laki ng salary. Yung salary is so high, but I can't stand the, ano, parang the Arab post yeah. para controlling us. Parang sobrang crash to the finish. You cannot take a bleed. Blah, 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 parang sa. Parang German yata yun eh, yung parang kakaalis lang na. Meron yun doon sa Hexagon. Kaya kasi nagkahanap nila. We are we're doing the Hexagon. Okay, sorry. You get it? Parang layo, sorry po. The most, the farthest I can go Singapore last year. It's like fast rate, speed rate, or yung parang high for the thing or something. I mean, what if it's the future? Pero sabi ng mga parang city, ano diba parang, bakit, bakit ganun? Why can't it be the more parang natural? You know, parang human, ano, or look, the human, human scale. Yeah. Ano nga yung tinuturo ko? First year, Meron concept ng ano ba? Ten minute city, five minute city. Nasa bago mo city. Yeah, I like that one. Kasi I'm trying to design my life sa kanan. So you're gonna find work or you're gonna find some hustles. Just ten minutes. Yeah, but tapos nagkano rin ako nagadjust rin ako sa MTU design. So, I, 10 minutes, I'm there. Diyan lang, sinipa na yung habit. That's how I hire you. Yeah, it has to be a... Specify the location of my office. Yeah. And I only get people from... Yes, there. yes, yes. It's, it's more... Ano, so, one of my employees just walked to the office. And then one went bouncing tricycle, right? Yeah, yeah. And if they want to walk, they can walk yes, in 30 yes, minutes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> It's not worth it. If you think about it, an hour, two hours in traffic, it's not worth the extra cash or, or income. It depends on the program. Okay, okay, okay. And if you rent, <laughs> Let's say, uh, may Saturdays kami have days. So, parang 24,000. And then, rent ka na lang dun sa Ortega. Makes sense, makes sense. Makes sense. Sobrang traffic. Parang there's this, like, nice home from group, LWK. Sabi ko, wow, parang style Pero, shocks, Chino Roses, Edsa. I'm just parang mag sa side hotels ka lang sa somewhere near you, okay? Sure. You can see, you can eat at home with your family. You can go early. The parking is easy. 
<laughs> now in the 60s, Iloilo City was like that. Uh, everybody was going home for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or might take a quick nap, that's when it's office. When SM came in, there was no lunch break, they raised them. SM Ido Ido. Yeah, when they started the first one, they raised them. Yeah, they they and they won. Yeah, yeah. Things started changing. <laughs> Another problem is nga parang super dami sa pila ng architects ngayon, I think, lalo na sa parang NU. Pag di ba ng NU, may nagugunan ba po? Parang, oh, hey, parang ang tao, sabi nga nila, my dad teaches in NU kasi. Kanti din. Ama nila, si Pinoy Cruz, ay naman si Boy. So, yeah. So, sabi niya, ang tinigil nga namin mag-enroll nga. So, ang dami nag Kasi usually, mga magaling mag-drawing. Kasi nung archie ako, parang with Pinas, tapos pagpatandaan ng place. Pero para pagdating mo technical, oh my God. Can you make this worse? Parang drawing nga, ng drawing na magkanta. <laughs> yep. So, it's a challenge rin eh. Parang, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
kung uh, 200 staff ko niya, may 200 architects ka, let's say 20,000 pesos a month. Hindi pa ano yun, every month dapat, paano ko babayaro na ito? Paano, paano kukunin yung how much? Millions of pesos. Kung lang ang business of architecture. Yan. Yeah. That's true. Puro drawing, drawing, pero yung numbers, wala. One of, uh, <laughs> Not a long time ago, I had a presentation called uh, The Business of Architecture for Small Practices. I had the calculations there. Okay, okay. Monthly, ganyan. I learned it the hard way. <laughs> for example, pati si Dennis Bina. Yeah. I didn't think about it like that. So, essentially, everything boils, boils down to how many, how much do you spend per hour working? Yes, yes, yes. How much? Uh, hourly rate. Okay.
meron ba? Wala eh, di ba? So, it's okay. Support your local beer. Wow, intimate sessions. Yeah, yeah, welcome. So, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Wow. Good evening. Thanks for being here. Thanks for ano, <laughs> going through the storm. And this is, I'm Bernie, by the way. Hello, people of the internet as well. I'm sure we have ano, 3 million viewers. Six. Or uh, six pala. <laughs> so, could be hosting and Richard is also hosting with me. Say hi. Say hi to the... Oh, hello. The moment is And... Okay, so uh, should I introduce or so, okay by the chat? Okay by the So tonight uh we will have uh we have our uh speaker uh, introduced to that the architect. Miguel Guerrero, FUAP, APEC Architect, SCN Architect, Ring Mike is the managing partner of Asian Architects, a firm established in 1986 that continues to deliver institutional, sacred, and hospitality buildings, striving to harness appropriate technology to arrive at climate sensitive, innovative, and sustainable design solutions. A passionate crusader of sustainability, he is one of the founders of Green Architecture Advocacy Philippines and was its chairman from 2011 to 2019. He is a fellow of the United Architects of the Philippines and one of the first 12 APEC architects and the first ASEAN architect with a specialization of green architecture in the Philippines. He is currently the chairperson of the Technical Working Group for Green Architecture under the Career Progression and Specialization Program and Credit Accumulation and Transfer System, tasked to create the accreditation guidelines for specialization in green architecture. A favorite resource person and mentor, he generous, generously shares knowledge and experience of professionalism and sustainability with others with the hope of making the world a better place to live in. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Architect uh, Miguel Guerrero. Our format today is quite unconventional for us. It's our, it's our first time doing this party hustle live because we usually do it online, as why we're having a hybrid today to have like a transition period. And for our guest reactor for tonight, she she is I, Andrea Carla Dorotan. She we also known as AK. <clears throat> She's an experienced architect and an urban planner with the specialization in the design of energy efficient buildings and sustainable cities. She finished her master's degree in design studies in Harvard University Graduate School of Design and she is the head of the urban plan planning at FA Fads. Cas Casanova. Casanova. Yeah. So, so Ortigas is in the office. <laughs> so, 
Yeah. So let's get let's get the ball rolling with Architect Guerrero. Let's give him a round of applause again. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want me to sit or stand? Hey, either. Okay. Stand. Okay. Right. Okay. 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 So thank you very much to President Archie for having me here. And also to the future next the next president, Siberti. Yeah, so, 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 wanted me to talk about green architecture, but I thought since we're sipping beer over this thing, why don't I decide to share something which is not even final, something which is developing in my mind, a concept which I will explain later. It's called responsible architecture. Wala pang term yan, you can have you can check it out because I'm still involving that thought in my mind. So it's more or less this is like sharing uh, some ideas which have been going around since most people know that I've been pushing green architecture for the longest time. I thought and thought about green architecture and I realized that there's more to green architecture than you really think it is. You know, one thing which actually has made a big impact on us is COVID. Right? So it's sure it should. Even the way we understand how to live our lives, it brought health to the forefront and it brought the importance of people's survival to the forefront. So, right after COVID, what did I do? I went back to the mountains. Not to live, <laughs> but just to enjoy it. I was always a nature kid. When I was in grade school, I used to trek, 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 mountains. And then I got caught in the rat race. You know the rat race is when you have to build up your career, build up your, your office, etc. And then after COVID, I decided to go with my classmates, uh, same age, I mean, 66, and we started climbing mountains again. Okay, so green architecture has been part of me, not because it was a fad, but it is inherently part of me. When I took up architecture, my favorite subject was site development. Why? Because when you go out and you set up camp, first you have to choose the right site. Then you have to choose how is, this, how is the slope of the site so that you make sure that you pitch your tent so that you don't have water. Then you start ditching around. That day, wala kaming don't tent, don't tent. We really have to do the hard work no? of tent. Okay? And then you have to look at the wind. Where's the wind? Therefore, decide where you're going to put up your campfire. So all of these things worked very well for me when I started going to college in architecture. And then even in the first few buildings, they were all oriented the right way. green architecture. And when I reviewed it, wow, shoot na shoot. Orientation to building, big windows on the north, south, smaller part of the building on the east, west. Now what started me thinking about going beyond green architecture is this. You see all sorts of pictures in the internet. <laughs> Look at these stairs, you know? Designer stairs, but you know, if you're going to go down, you'll miss the stair. You know? This one. Okay? You could actually kill your clients that way. <laughs> My round. Correct. Round. Follows the law, right? So because of these things, I started thinking. Is green architecture the solution to everything or should we go beyond green architecture? How can we respond to the needs of people as an architect ourselves? So today, four points, transition, some ideas, then I'll talk about sustainability, accessibility, and safety. So transitions. When you think, of, when you think about green architecture, you will always go to the these three, they call these the three pillars of, of sustainability of green architecture. People, planet, prosperity. In fact, there's a saying that they are like a table with three legs. People, planet, prosperity. If you remove one leg, the table will fall down. Okay? Equal yan. But the deeper I got into this thing thought, I realized that of the three, it's not equal. 
people are the most important. And people can survive or should survive relying on resources of the planet. So worst case scenario, even if the planet collapses, people should survive. I mean, that's, can you think about it the other way? Should we actually focus the planet at the expense of people? That's the point. Yeah? We are put in this world so that we survive based on the planet. So people are the most important. That is why I started going to, okay, what does Republica 9266? No, we're not going to talk about the engineers versus architects. Because there's no problem. What are our responsibilities, no? Okay, so architects are responsible for advocating fair and sustainable development, welfare, and cultural expression of society's habitat in terms of space, forms, and historical context. I just look at this word, highlight, welfare. We are responsible for the welfare of people in the built environment, through everything we do. So, important in welfare. Ito naman, condom ethics, di ba? He or she shall strive to improve the environment and the life and habitat within it, within it in a sustainable manner, fully mindful of the effects of his or her work on the widest interest of all those who may reasonably be expected to use the product of his work. What is the key? Improve. Di ba? We are not only going to do structures, but we have all the constantly trying to improve the way we actually build the structures for the future. So the key is there, no? We have to improve people's welfare. So I think that is the starting point. I think rather than only focus on green architecture, we have to go beyond and actually look at people's welfare, improving it. And that is why architects' responsibility is actually covered in, at the moment, uh, three aspects. That people are safe, the structures you create. Eh, nakita ko yung pictures kanina, yung mga ganyan. We, have, we cannot do that. Huh? We have to make sure that people are safe. That people have access to our structures independent of the physical ability they have or even mental ability. No? And finally, sustainable. That's why these three are actually governed by laws. Safety, you have the fire code of the Philippines. Accessibility, you have the accessibility law. And of course, sustainability, you have the Philippine Green Building Code. So they are actually there. That's why even the law has allowed us to do that. Now, if you want to prove, if you want to discuss about the value of architect, the architect is the first interpreter of all these three laws. Because that's what goes in plan. So we should actually be experts in those different laws. So we have to take our responsibility, those three. Professionally, no? that is our responsibility, that, that is our primary responsibility to make sure we follow those laws. We have to do it passionately, not making under the table guys so that we can pass our plans even if we are not conforming to all of the standards and laws. And then to be patient. Patient. Why? Because, example, no? you put around plans, mahaba. The client says, Good na architect, mahal mahal ng ram. Be patient. Tell them the advantages of Ram, for example. There's a saying of Hippocrates, he says the following the physician treats what nature heals. This is important because actually, like doctors, they can actually give you all sorts of treatment, but at the end of the day, it's nature, your body, and what is around you which will actually heal you. The same can be said of an architect. The architect must design with nature, just nature heals. So we have to work with the environment, create that built environment and habitat of humanity within nature and let nature heal us. That's why connectivity to the outside is very, very important in dream architecture. So let's go to sustainability. We all know this, no? There's the Philippine Green in, in the code. You might, inside, you might be saying, yeah, right. It only applies to buildings of 10,000 square meters and above. Yeah, right. But are we going to not follow? Are, are we going to not follow this thing just because it applies to bigger buildings? The principles are basic. The principles are good. They are sustainable, and we should apply it to all buildings. No? You know, in uh, during the pandemic, this comp this uh, uh, magazine, the D, D C, was going going to co come up with an article, and they interviewed several architects. Uh, I was one of them. On Exactly there. Now, rethinking architecture in post-pandemic era. 
hindi pa tapos yung university and during the pandemic when they asked that question. So I answered them the following. If you're talking about sustainability, there are four threats to sustainability for humanity. If the techno threat, internet, you can imagine the world is run by computers. If you go to Singapore, there are many MRT lines which don't have a driver. They're controlled by somebody there in a central control panel. No? What if all the air traffic is controlled by computers? What if somebody throws a virus in corners our pager? Then you could have chaos, you could have deaths. You have echo threat. We already know that. Climate change. We have bio threat. It's happened to us in COVID. We can actually be uh, vulnerable to that. And we have terror threat, man-made violence, right? Uh, let's hope that after we today we took out the uh, the floating barriers there in the West uh, Philippine Sea. Let's hope that tomorrow China does not retaliate for that. <laughs> they put the barrier there. <laughs> we took it out today, and I hope they, they will not uh, go ballistic over that. No? So there, no. So all of these are actually threats to sustainability. So again, another thought: green architecture is not only one; it involves many other things okay that's why there's a concept called integral ecology that everything is connected okay when you find that connection so what did i say in that article simply lang. let's revisit the healthy aspects of green building yeah after the covid natural ventilation natural light etc they became important then let's revisit traditional pinoy culture what is traditional pinoy culture there are different phases, levels in the, in the house. There's outer area, there's an inner area, private area, etc. You actually uh, dry out things there in the, in, in the kitchen, for example, etc. And then revisit sustainable living. The Bahay Kubo song, right? That you have food in your, in, your, in your house. So actually, there's nothing new. Actually, uh, Norman Foster said that because of COVID, the Ideas of green architecture and sustainability have become even more important than fun because of issue of health. And then I even made a short, I give them a whole list of practical pandemic solutions. Focus on health, sustainability, and technology. Health, sanitation, ventilation, sunlight, outdoors, comfort, sustainability, food, water, and energy. And then technology, work from home, learning, online learning, and shopping. I won't go in detail of these things so that we can go to the question and answer. But in other words, from the problems of pandemic, I actually listed down ways in which we can improve uh, the living, the well being of people in the projects we have. And then, I, many of you, I don't know if many of you here, have heard my very first uh, way of simplifying architecture, green architecture. I called it the 10 step sustainability. This is another version. This is the newer version. So I call it Practical Green, rated PG, the foundation of sustainability. Instead of 10, I put only two. Working with nature and assisting nature. So what is working with nature? So everything which nature is giving you, the site, you can work on building and block with respect to heat, light, and ventilation, looking at food and water within the site, and materials. And then, kung hindi na kaya yan, you go to the second step, which is assisting nature. And that means cooling, using technology to cool yourself, um, your new building, using artificial light, and of course, renewable energy. No? So there are just some examples I've uh, show you. For example, in the site, no? number one, check for geohazards. Okay, many problems start with missing out in this thing, no? that your building gets flooded, your building collapses because of birthday, masyadong malapis, fault pala, etc. No? So, first, check what are the geohazards and then advise your client uh, as needed. No? And then, to decide, minimize south site alterations. Because no? the more you touch the site, the bigger your possibility of actually destroying your site. No? And then, working with nature, your building envelope naman, Okay, we reduce it, no? And what is that? See, the way is actually just to make sure that your building is elongated so that smaller section faces east-west and the bigger section faces north-south. Remember, it's very hot in the Philippines and we have to minimize solar exposure. With natural light, building envelope, since 
we are trying to avoid sunlight, direct sunlight on the east and west. We just have, we can open up to the north and south, or better north because we are above the equator in the Philippines. And south, we can have regular windows. Ventilation. Where does the ventilation come from? Amiyan and Abaga, northeast, southwest, but word of warning. When you do an actual site analysis, there's microclimate. So check where is the actual wind direction and strength so that you can actually use those free resources to your advantage. Rainwater. Libre the night. It's rained so much. Imagine where does all that water come and go? It goes down to the drain, goes out to the street, the uh, drains. It goes all the way up to Camp Krame, and then it's at the lowest point, it all comes out there. So, we have to look at that, no? See if you can actually harvest rainwater. Where do you harvest rainwater? As high as possible. Many of my projects in the highest floor, I have a rainwater collection tank room. It's not, it's not a, I don't think they build a, build a tank. I just get these uh, ready-made tanks, maybe you get three or four. Uh, put them in a series so that at least when it goes down, there's already some pressure. No? So sign in. Then, of course, you have an overflow. You can always bring it down to the, to the bottom. No? With food, you can always plant food. I think this one I don't explain much because I think during the COVID, many people started planting food. No? Anyway, this concept is called square foot gardening. It's an interesting uh, concept which came from the U.S. that in a, in a small space, you can actually plant a variety of uh, food. No? And then materials. How do we choose our materials? Better if they're renewable, durable, low maintenance, and modular. So this is the cycle how we get our materials. No? We extract it from the earth. It's used in the building process. It's used. At the end of a life cycle of a material, a green material can be reused goes back to the loop, shorter loop, can be recycled, so farther down the loop, and then if it has to go into the dumping earth, you should actually biodegrade. That's ideal. Now, I will share with you a recent discussion about bamboo. Bamboo is getting hot. It's really good. But then, bamboo is not a very durable material. Okay, so there were some discussions even with some of the people from Bali, architecture Bali. They were saying, yes, it is nice to have bamboo, but some of the bamboo buildings which they have shown in the internet, etc., are now deteriorated. So what they're saying, and I think this is something which can learn here, all young people here, I think this is a better material. We can actually use laminated bamboo. Okay, so these are bamboo. The traffic can be formed into different lumber sizes. And they say that it probably will last longer. So again, as green architects, we have to balance, not it's a, okay, it's, this is a release, renewable, it's easy to grow. We can treat it, yes, but see, what is the life span of that material? Side. And then cooling. You know that before air construction be developed, there were fans. So therefore, uh, there are some companies who are actually bringing back fans. So you can actually combine fans and air cons. In fact, in the cooler weather, you maybe just have to use the fan. Okay? These are very slow moving fans, but they're very big. No? I like the brand of one of them. It's called Big Ass Fans. I'm very loyal to Big Ass Fans. You know why? Because one time I was attending a AIA conference in the US, and then we were had to catch the uh, flight. So several of the delegates were out there in the road waiting for a taxi. Then we're asking, are you going to the airport? <coughs> Let's share a cab. Okay, so we all got four of us, went, uh, three of us went to the cab. And then he dropped us off. And then he said, how much, how much do we pay? How, how much is my, 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 my share? No problem. I'll foot the bill. Just remember, big ass pants. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, 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 it's good. Huh? There are other brands already now. Then lightning. If you have a window, do you need the light beside the window to be open? Turned on? Not during the day, but signing my natural light. Huh? That's why one of the things which are is good in for green architecture is that the switches are dictated from the distance the light is away from the window. Because right now our electrical lighting designers they want to have like 
mood lighting. So when you want turn on one switch, alternate light yan. Then you add another switch, all the lights are on, no? Eh, pero sayang yung mga ilaw sa katabi ng bintana during the day. So it's, you can actually change the way you actually switch your lights. No? Then of course, you, you can also use renewable energy, solar panels. Actually, there's more than solar panels. You even have solar water heaters, and you even have solar absorption air conditioners, which is a growing uh, product in which you actually heat the refrigerant under the sun, and it actually produces the uh, cooling. Okay, important thing is that whatever you use, photovoltaic, solar water heater, or solar absorption air conditioner, that this panel in the Philippines uh, must face generally south. And this angle is the latitude you are above the equator. Now, since the sun moves east to west in the Philippines, the light on the southern side, it has to generally face south so that it's maximum. No? Okay, I've always stated that, that green architecture is designing with nature. Use the resources first, you design with nature, and then after that, you assist nature. And of course, we know that we have the Philippine Green Leaf Building Code, but let's go beyond the Philippine Green Leaf Building Code. We owe it to the people we're designing for, no? We are not going to be stingy followers of no, always following the minimum. But let's see if we can actually put that in all our buildings. The clients deserve it, the public deserves it. Now let's go to the second one. Accessibility, when you talk about accessibility, you already know about that, no? BB444, all about the uh, ramps and all. But I need to use to something different. Because when you talk about disabilities, it's not always permanent. It could be a temporary disability. Like you got the sprain, I got the sprain once, and I was using crutches, and I realized that the distance you travel from the parking to wherever you have to go becomes a problem. No, before, oh, wala problem yan, kahit malayan. But now, I realized. No? That's why as my friend was telling me, see, now that you experience a life of disabled, you will design more sensitive. So what are the disabilities? Can be permanent, can be temporary. Mobility, ambulatory wheelchair. You may have partial or total uh, uh, malfunctioning of your body, arm. <laughs> you could have visual impairment. It could be total, could be partial. You could have part also a problem with hearing. You could also have a problem with your perception. And all of those are disabilities and all of those are people. We have to design for them. We cannot ignore them. That's why there's a principle called universal design. It is beyond accessibility. Okay? It's usable by all people. Now, for example, this is humanity. Normal people are 50% of humanity, but the other 50% have all sorts of different capacities. And we have to try to design for all. No? <clears throat> so the principles of universal design are seven. No? Equitable use. Flexibility in use, simple intuitive use, perceptible information, tolerance for error, low physical effort, and size and space for your force rates. But this is more practical. Okay, one, number one, equitable use. The environment is useful and marketable to people with diverse abilities. The picture there is a entrance. What is it found in a normal entrance the way we design? We have stairs in the front, and we have a ramp for the handicap, high low, somewhere in the left, right, or whatever. No? What are we doing with that design? We are ostracizing the disabled. Like your second class citizen, Jen Kasakure. Yeah? So, how do we solve that? Why can't we have a one level entrance? You start bringing up the elevation farther away from the building as you start going up. So, therefore, if you have a one level entrance, everyone can pass through that building, through the same entrance, and nobody is ostracized, so to speak. Flexibility in use. The environment accommodates a wide range of individual preferences and abilities. Look at this drawing here. This kid can stay in that room until he's a teenager or even an adult. First, while he's still young, the bar of his hangers are actually low. But without any major change, you can always raise that bar little by little as he grows. That is one example of flexibility in use. Simple and intuitive use, okay? It's easy to understand regardless of the user experience. This one, is that easy to understand use? You know, I found out that not many people understand that. <laughs> of course, we don't, no? As architects, you know, yung malit, minor operation, yung malaki, 
major operation is us. But you know, many people don't know many times they press both, all, or press it twice. So sorry, when you know, it's not clear. Actually, I, I mentioned that to the the manufacturers of these things. So you should do some sort of design which is more intuitive, no? In fact, one, 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 the first time this came out, one of my clients came out. May sira lahat ng minidoro namin. May crack sa gitna ng pintura na. So people don't understand that stuff. Challenge for the manufacturers. No? Perceptible, perceptible information. It should be easy, no? To understand, for example, having location maps in 3D rather than in 2D. Not many people understand 2D. Tolerance for error can be used, for example, you can use it left or right or look at this. No? If this is a escalator, anything beyond uh, lower than two meters is going to be a danger for people passing through. That's why this is what they do. They put something under that area which is two meters or less. Right? Low physical effort. Why are lever type more uh, attractive now? Not because of design. If you have a stroke, you cannot grip. You cannot hold, or if you're holding many things, you can use your elbow to open it. Right? So that's one reason to use it. And then approximate size. No? So, for example, make sure no? every time you have a facility which you need people to help, or even if they're wheelchair, they should be able to use that no? wheelchair or people. No? So those are the things. Now, these are practical. Young universal design applies to all designers. No? Now, this one I just made the risk of what we can use for the house. No step entry, I mentioned that earlier. Covered entry with package shelves. When you're a handicapped person or you're many, many, uh, carrying many things, when you get to your entrance, you're going to look for your key. You have to find a place where you're going to put down your bags. Okay, think about that. Why doors at 900 mm? They may not be handicapped now, but they could be temporarily handicapped. So make sure that the main doors all throughout the house are actually 900. Corridor width, minimum 1.2. Turning radius at front in front doors, 1.5. Light switches, 1 meter above and 400 below. So that if you're in seated or in wheelchair, you can reach that. And high contrast. Huh? Problems, people with problems with visibility. Huh? High contrast. That's here. Everybody likes making it uh, same color. The bedroom with accessible back at the ground floor. This one is a success. In all the houses I built, I convinced the owner to have a bedroom at the ground floor with a handicapped bathroom, which they can make use as them first. And then later on, they said, one of these days, if you, if you have a problem going up or even temporarily, you have a bedroom that's for that. Okay? Kitchen counters with removable cabinet, so that at least some of the cabinets you'll be able to slide out so you can actually use a wheelchair to, to, to go into it. Stairs with high contrast, yeah. Hindi kagaya ng kanina. High contrast ka, pero you step, it's a different color. No? So, high contrast. No? Accessible laundry, lever type lock sets, cable type showers, cable type showers. No? So, you cannot reach the top. You can actually sitting down, do sitting down. No? Lever type faucets, same principle. Adjustable shelves, provision for stairs, lifts or elevators. This is another thing I did in one project also. No? Actually, design already a stair. Uh, an elevator shaft. Don't put the elevator in. Put the wooden flooring and that becomes storage. In case they need it, there's a radiant place. You can explain it to the owner that that's that there. You can have the actually an elevator installed. Huh? Then workspace around beds. Okay. So these are all the all the ideas. But you can be creative enough, but bottom line is that you should think about the safety and movement of people. So I would like to say, don't stick to BPD44, the minimum. Minsan, you're stingy, you know? One is to 20. You're lucky. Philippines is one is to 12. You know what other countries have? One is to 20. Mas matindi. Diba? So, let's go beyond that. Let's design for all. And I think that is being our part. That's how to become a responsible architect. And the safety. This one is very fast. Oh, we already know, no? Fire code in the Philippines, huh? Have you seen this book? Yeah. 
Ha? Si Pareng Ching. Ha? Fire Code Illustrated. Bumili ako first set of print niya. Si Kay Bilbo ko. Anyway, bottom line. Okay, in the Fire Code, essentially, you have to calculate for egress exit. No? Figure out the capacity. Then get the exit width. Then the number of exits. And then the travel distance. Okay, we all know that. I'm not going to talk about that. All I want to say is this. If you're going to get the fire code, make sure that people using the building feel safe. They should feel safe. What's that like? Oh, okay, building most. We already uh, we, we conform to the fire code that we fix. Normal people don't care. Fire code, PP, 344, they don't care. We have to make them feel it that, oh, I feel very safe in this building. Okay, so try to work that out. Huh? So, again, our responsibility. Every time we see pictures like this, temporary disability, I will say, that is a failure of an architect's responsibility. Or you see that? People cannot get into the building, but he has to get in. So he starts climbing down. I would say that that is a failure on our part to give society a better place to live in. So before I end, nasa <laughs> Instagram You know, I all this life, all my life. I've been putting up small little tips. I've been having research. No? Some of you probably have heard about it. I have Archetips. I have Green Archetype Series. I have Archetypes. I have Archetots. I have Archetweets. And I have recently put up professional practice, prof practice. And I put them in different Facebook pages. And I decided, since I'm a fan of them, I'm not sure if I'm Say, pushing myself. I decided I'll put it in all everything I've done in my life in one sort of place. And this is going to be Instagram, Arky underscore Mike G. No? So already you see, no? It's already I'm, I'm post, posting my 500 green archetypes. No? Nasa 115 pa na ako so far. No? But I have 500. Tapos na I just post it every day. No? So, and so that you don't get bored, photographer did not. Yeah, every two days, every on the third day, I post a picture. Entertainment, you know? So you can go there, check it out. Hindi na ako susulat ng libro. Ito na yung liga siguro para sa para sa lahat. No? All my all my archetypes there, and it's part of my pro practice. Actually, we were talking about it in this in this table earlier. Is how to make sure that you don't lose money when you have start your own practice. No? We actually have to calculate certain things. No? Okay, so okay, closing. So I would say that remember, from green architecture to responsible architecture, it started out with looking at green architecture, people made a planet and prosperity. And I thought people are the most important reason why we are pursuing architecture. So let's design for people in a specific place. That means where you are, the location, the environment, in a specific culture. Yeah. Design for people in a specific place, in a specific culture. And that's why I would like to say, if we design sustainable, accessible, and safe environments, we are designing responsible architecture. So in my opinion, I think the transition from being a green architect to hopefully what I would call a responsible architect, revolves around doing better to make sure that we have people in a better situation, their welfare is more protected, and at the same time, let us go beyond all those minimum requirements in law and go to the level in which people deserve. So that at the end of the day, at the end of the day ultimately, they are actually living in a better place because we have become responsible architects. So, yun. Maraming salamat ko. Maraming sa mga viewers dyan. San Miguel Pepe. Maraming sa mga viewers Thank you. Thank you, Architect Mike, for your insights on how architects must take the responsibility to create a, a safe, accessible, and sustainable environment for improving our lives 
And it's such a privilege to hear your thoughts on how your, your message has evolved into a bigger scope on how spaces should be designed and how our profession has to be uh, progressed. Is that a word? Is that so? I like what you said. Uh, we have to take responsibility professionally, passionately, and patiently. Especially the patiently where everyone's in a rush, like to create, to design, to build, build better, build big new, build. So, sakto lang na we really do have to be patient na lalabas talaga yung design that is really for the people, place, and the culture. And so, may I ask AK to take the mic to give us her thoughts on Architect Mike's thoughts. Thoughts. <laughs> Hello, good evening. So, thank you, uh, Burley, for inviting me as a uh, guest. Guest, guest response, sir. <laughs> Panelist. <laughs> um, so, um, it's very refreshing to hear Architect Mike's take on, um, on a green architecture and taking it to three levels, no? So, people, place, and culture. Um, actually, I've heard, uh, I've lecture me architect Mike on green architecture but it's refreshing to see that um during his um pagmumuni muni a lot of us during the pandemic we had a lot of time to ourselves to think to think about ourselves um have new have hobbies you know? And um, architect Mike was able to thread it, pag bit na na pag ano niya, na encapsulate niya yung concept na green architecture, and then um, the universal design, um, and about safety, no? and and his thoughts on when it comes to sustainability, it's about people, planet, and prosperity. But the main goal really is the people. No? And because of that, he was able to thread it onto accessibility and safety. So it's not just about green architecture. It's, it's going beyond green and going towards being responsible architects. Um, I also like the fact that he emphasized that we have to go beyond the loss. No? So the like, tayo ng counting review, no? going beyond um, the Philippine Green Building Code, going beyond uh, PP344, and going beyond the fire code. Because in our daily lives in an, and in our daily practice, minsan gusto natin basta, basta pumasa sa code. But if we think about it, if we want to be responsible architects, then we have to go beyond. We have to be creative. Um, Siguro, you know that? Thank you, AK. <laughs> Wait lang. So I forgot to mention, AK is also one of the pioneers that, conduct, that, that conducted architectural design competitions for important government buildings in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And is also a certified building ecological responsive design excellence professional and auditor, as well as an LEED accredited professional. Yeah. Me. Very, very good. Also a chapter member. 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 Also a ch
So, maganda tayo question and answer portion. So, Sige, we'll start ako. We'll start ako kasi yeah, na, napakinggan ko kanina. Yung sa bamboo architecture. Kasi napansin, marami ako nakikita ngayon sa, sa social media. Yung mga Hawaiian Collective, mga maraming mga gumagawa ng mga super ganda ng mga bamboo architecture ngayon. And I think meron din yatang parang magiging uh, building codes for bamboo. Yes, design yata, di ba? So, parang, so, kindly expound po sa na sinabi nyo kanina na parang in, ASEAN, in other ASEAN countries like Indonesia or Malaysia, parang medyo hindi pala siya tumatagal or parang nabubukbuk pa or nagkakaroon pa ng ano pa mga major problems na nangyayari doon. Kasi I'm sure uh, maraming mga young architects na, oh, they're thinking Filipino, let's do bamboo stuff. Pero yun pala, hindi siya talaga ganun ka ka sustain so, long term or parang for siguro for some, yeah. parang ano lang parang for a few years that's after that you took the rent down and build a new one can you expound on your your experience on the bamboo bamboo hey okay, thank you for the uh, question uh this was discussed uh not in a public forum but in internal forum mm -hmm. we were sharing like what I'm sharing, these are these are developing thoughts. There's nothing wrong with bamboo. As a matter of fact, bamboo is which is if it's treated well, and uh, uh, if you follow the, the rules of connectors, it's good. But the fact is that it doesn't last a lifetime. The architect from Bali mentioned that uh, I don't know if you remember that uh, several years ago there was this bamboo restaurant which is on the internet. He says now it's up for sale. This is deteriorated so much. Huh? Uh, so there has to be a way somehow. I'm not putting down bamboo. I'm just saying these are thoughts which are evolving. No? People, and he has used bamboo a lot. No? He's architect himself. It is good. But then now that uh, time has passed, people are starting to look at, okay, we started all of these things. Now what is happening to these structures now? It's a reality check. Now, the challenge is this, no? Can we do something with those deteriorating bamboo structures? That's going to be up to creativity technology. Can we do something? Maybe spray on top of it, replace some elements, I don't know. Or do we go to the, what they were mentioning, possibility of just using laminated bamboo or crushed laminated paper, etc., to replace the wooden parts of the so it is not definitive. It's, we're not saying we're not saying that forget about bamboo. It's just a growing thought of kamuna. Yes, it's it's probably longer than normal normal bamboo building because it's treated, but then the long-term effect doesn't seem to be very promising. So now it requires a solution. And that's where we have to come in. Can we solve this problem? So yeah. Thank you, Sir Mike. Very interesting how you specified that it is a developing idea. It reminds me of how um, in Japan, how they restore their temples is that they continually, continuously replace, replace that, that material and what they actually preserve is the the skills and the technique of the culture to build it. So it might be interesting for us Filipinos to develop that, you know, the preserve preserving that skill and technique of how to build bamboos. So it eventually becomes a continuous maintenance, continuous restoration kind of concept. All right. So are there <laughs> Okay, yes. <laughs> uh, hello, Architect Mike. Yes. Uh, Architect Mike, you know, you're the first one guest in UAP. Yes. You're the first one in the chapter. You're the first one in the chapter. Yes, Jake Palas. I'm going to organize it. I'm going to do 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 it. Sorry, I'm going to do it. 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 Regarding being a responsible designer for all people. Pero may dilemma po kasi ako doon. Kasi, hindi po kasi yung sitwasyon ng tao doon sa kanya lalagay niya. Yun. 
Ang unang tanong ko dyan ay paano siya i-address? Uh, ganito po yung nangyari ba? Dahil sa young practitioner, inibitahan ako sa inyong bahay. Sabi, uh, inibitahan ako para doon i-check yung bahay nila. Tapos siguro magbigay ng consultation para siguro nakapag-recommend. Ang problema, pumunta ako doon sa area. Hindi ako familiar doon sa area. Pero pagdating ko, pinabaha yung lugar. Tapos doon sa main road, para, para, para ka makapunta sa mismong bahay. Maglalakad kasi skip na. Maglalakad ka sa payo ng basura. Pagdating mo doon sa dulo, yung bahay, maganda naman yung bahay. Siguro inisip ko, lumaki sila in, in poverty, in slums area, pero nagkaroon siguro ng anak na nag-abroad. Tapos nagkaroon sila ng bahay. For some reason, ayaw nilang umalis doon sa area. Pero out of courtesy, buong na po ako doon. Hindi ko actually alam na gano'n. So hindi ko alam kung paano yung address. At tapap yung may may iniisip ko, siguro bumili na kayo ng trip sa ibang lugar, tapos na tayo pa tayo. Pero pinakita sa akin yung problema, for example, nag-leak yung roof, may problema sa waterproofing, tapos pag mumaba, inaapuntan yung ano nila, yung ground floor nila. Pero there are people living here. Tapos, naiko na ko lang kasi sinasabi nyo, if you wanted to design as responsible as possible to the people, eto paano po pag ganun yung condition nila? Yun. Yun po yung tatak sa inyo. Thank you, Cox. I know you're a very famous, very talented young architect. Ooh, yes. I want you all to look at all your quotes. Okay. Given that scenario, no? it's actually a very, you need a very a creative mind for that. Okay. If I were in your position, no? because you were talking about very specific solution, what would I do? What is outside is very difficult to control. But if you go inside, you start checking. First, the house should be functional. So, I would repair everything which has been repaired. The leaks, etc. It floods. Maybe you can suggest, for example, if they cannot vacate the ground floor and leave it open, I would raise all the outlets at a height higher than the, the flood, I mean, the highest flood level. And then I would try to see if uh, there are ways in which uh, the water can drain quickly outside, if necessary. Uh, slope the floor so that even if the water comes in, it goes up easy to clean materials. No? Uh, maybe if you can, you can even put more things on, on upstairs at, at second floor rather than the ground floor. No? And if it is even possible, if that outside is not nice. No? If it's, I do not know the situation else. I would like to create, I would probably even create, puncture a, a courtyard in the middle so that they look in rather than look out. So actually it depends on that, but again, no, it's depending on creativity. You want to give them a better environment. Of course, first functional. So siempre, I use a lot of problema, di ba? Ulo, etc. And then think, no? Floods, raise, raise all the electrical. Baka you can even rewire. You, Yung, yung uh, service entrance electrical comes on the second floor, tapos down feed lahat, wala nang dadaan sa ilalim. So that it stops at the level higher than the, the flood. So that even if it floods, wala kang problema sa, sa getting shorted or whatever. So again, that's where the architect comes in. Seeing a problem, looking at, the, relying on the creativity of the architect and trying to improve the life of the person or your client. No? Kaya, yun ang kanina didiscuss namin. Yung hindi, hindi yan marirepress ng AI. Uh, when you start connecting to an individual project, individual people of individual needs, medyo mahirap yung AI. No? It'll be creative. So, I hope that answers your question. But, maganda yun. No? Bottom line is, have a heart. Anong bago na naman? Have a heart. Be responsible. And use your architectural creativity to solve the problem. Pero as usual, first, the core, meaning the house should function, and secondly, the safety. Thank you. Most welcome, sir. Have a heart, Yan. Oh, sana lahat tayo may Wow, my so speaking of AI, um, um, I'm not saying that this is related, but 
you mentioned um, you mentioned a while ago in your talk uh, threats to sustainability. There's that eco, bio, terror, and techno threat. Can you expound the techno threat? Like how? I mean, I I'm sure all of us have an idea on how technology is a threat to sustainability. But I want to know, like, what are your thoughts and maybe a case as well. This morning, I'm sure many of you had a problem attaching bias to your Bible. Yeah. <laughs> some one. Very true. Very true. So, I was trying to put, put in some, uh, sending some sketches to uh, somebody. Okay. Just, uh, huh? Telegram. Yeah, just, uh, okay. Pati signal, Telegram, uh, WhatsApp, Discord. Okay. Now, going to that question, no? I am not against technology. Yeah. Fact, it's very good, it's very helpful. But there are parts of technology which can give us a lot of problems. And the big question is this, what if technology fails? We are so reliant on technology uh, that if it fails, for example, uh, uh, air traffic controllers, it's all computerized, but that's very complicated. No? So if something fails there, then you have accidents. The, the, what I mentioned earlier, the, some of the trains in uh, Singapore don't have drivers. And I was in one of those trains when there was a malfunction. We were going this way, but the signboard there was going the other way. And whenever you'd stop, it would be different name inside terminal and uh, different name in the actual. No? So there will always be an overriding announcement of the guy there in uh, Central Station. Please do not look at the signboards. We will just tell you where you are. The next station is Tanjong Pagar. Okay, so there, no? So these are the dangers of uh, these are the I call it threats of sustainability because they can actually cause major uh, disasters and they can actually cost lives. No? So that's why techno threat or anything, no? Somebody plants a virus in the uh, I mean, ICBM, all these uh, nuclear warheads. And all of a sudden, it goes short, short, it short circuits, and all the missiles from US start going to the Russia, and Russia goes to the US, and then we have a pandemonium. So these are the dangers. Of course, in theory, they should have technology, should have backup systems, no? redundancy. But sometimes, even the redundant systems can fail. No? So you know, that's why technology is good, but it also poses a threat. So we have to be careful about it. Technology. Um, yes, uh, technology. Let's so, yeah. <laughs> Actually, after the pandemic, saka naging ano yung matulog yung AI, <coughs> and how is it going to affect architecture? And even sa sa akadimo. Among students, no? um, freshman architecture students are already contemplating a graduate vanilla after five years and then apprenticeship, apprenticeship of two years. So let's say seven years from now, there are pa silang trabaho. So I think that's one of the. I, I like. I like it about Architect Mike's lecture na when he presented the threats, the techno threat is one of it. And it's really a continuous conversation. No? Uh, maganda, siyang, maganda siyang pinag-uusapan kasi ano nga ba ang future? What is, what is human creativity and what is AI? And um, so, nag, minsan nagpapasa rin ako ng mga articles and may iba na nag uh, ano na um, AI can only learn from humans. No? So, whatever we input, yun yung kaya nakaka-create ng AI ng poetry, drawings, um, even novels daw, di ba? Um, may mga authors yata na um, I think they're gonna sue Chat GPT yata or OpenAI. So it makes it 
makes us think what, what is the essence of the human soul and the human creativity? Yeah, like life. So life, green architecture, responsive, responsible architecture. And um, I guess it's a continuous conversation. And I'm really appreciative na may venue tayo ganito. No? Na we can air our questions, share our stories. Sorry, Metro. My follow pressure. Metro, oh. parang high polluting. <laughs> okay. I have a follow, follow question. So you mentioned... Um, What is the human soul with regards to AI? So, and our profession. So, would you say it is a threat in your eyes? Um, personally, kasi hindi ko pa nag hindi ko pa nagigamit yung mga AI image generator. No? But I see some people, no, um, using Midjourney, and I even ask some uh, ano ko, the students ko. I even asked them to use an AI image generator para lang ma-feel nila agad, no? Um, I don't know if darating yung time na na-capture na ba talaga ng AI, no? But I, I read one article na kaya daw tumatali na yung AI, di ba? Pinapart out nila yan eh, na um, and at the end, ang nagaan is yung human, di ba? Parang um, tayo yung nagtitrain yeah. dun sa AI. Parang yeah. um, it's being outsourced and then cheaply we do it na tama ba yung hindi ng AI na gano'n. So, is it a threat? Is it coming? So, magiging o bang, mangyayari ba yung sa, ano, sa Terminator? No. Skynet yun? Skynet ba yun? Um, I feel like ngayon hindi pa. Yeah. But, di ba, ang, ang bilis ng technology. And I guess we just have to be aware and, and ano, keep up. No? Um, we, we don't have to be afraid of it. But it will give us an advantage if, if we know about it. Yeah. 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 Is the development. Siya bin AK, we need to keep up. Pero the way I see it, kasi, hindi tayo mga keep up. Um, na, na appreciate din siya bin ERT at Mike, kasi, naglulu forward sa kung anong pwedeng mga yari in the future after the, the pandemic. Probably pwede kung li ask sa kanya. What if we came to a point that we are overtaken by AI? Take note that not all, not just our profession are affected. Doctors are affected, the nurses, lahat the artists. Actually, kawawa na yung graphic artists kayo in the advent of the big journey. Hindi po kami gumagamit ng big journey. Then so, kung mayroon kami, may may viper group kasi kami. Uh, pwede po siguro ang tanong yun si R. D. R. Mike. Probably, what will happen to to a family that is, sabi natin, in the future, that the intelligence has been overtaken by AI, and the resources of human knowledge that we do have now, hindi na siya kailangan. So, ano mangyayari sa isang pamilya na ganun? Probably, we can assume that it would be off-grid. Pero ano yung situation doon? Actually, I appreciate to yung sinag yung kanina na may parang uh, farm area for sustainability. Medyo nakalinkage kasi doon eh. Baka ang uso na noon ay merong isang plot of land, probably somewhere in the mountains, that I will not divulge my address. Kasi meron ng human threat, kasi survival na, I don't know, probably your thoughts are not. Well, just to add uh, uh, to what AJ said, we don't have to be worried. We don't have to be scared of technology. What we have to look forward to is actually how to reinvent ourselves in the advent of technology. So the more we know about technology, we just have to simply. Uh, I came from the 
pre computer days in architecture. So, of course, the computer came, of course, the generation of no? Oh, what's going on with us? No? Okay, put it in a sketch up. Yeah, that's a sketch up. <laughs> but you know, all, we should not stop technology. I think it's for, the, it's for the best. But then we have to sort of try to reinvent ourselves constantly. If the family is like that and then all their skill sets become obsolete because of technology, then somehow the family may have to reinvent themselves. If reinventing themselves means making sure they have the basic needs of uh, life, food, water, shelter, and they're there in the mountains, that is their, their response to, to the reinventing themselves from the technology, then so be it. No? Each one will have his own response. But at the end of the day, I think the human spirit is going to seek a way to survive. And that seeking the way to survive is going to develop creativity. Wise ideas on how to go about it. But again, no matter what happens, there's always that going back to basics attraction. No? Food, water, shelter. You know? The farther you are from technology, the better. Oh, free. Oh, free the way. And my phone is always in silent mode. The clients can never call me. When I see their message, okay, sa kaka nang kinatawag ko sila. Na-train ko na sila lahat. <laughs> Don't call me. I will call you. Get na sila. Okay? Any more questions? I mean, I go online. Uh, how do you reconcile nature and technology in your design, sir? Nature and technology, they are not opposed to each other. They help each other. That's why in my uh, practical dream, it starts out first with working with nature, and then the second one is assisting nature. That assisting nature involves technology. So what is it? For example, you need greater illumination, you need cooling, more cooling in your house. You actually look into technology. Aircon may now, there is already solar absorption air conditioners. Huh? So there is no conflict between nature and technology. Okay, It's actually, we have to use uh, technology to assist nature in creating a comfortable environment for human beings. So does it answer the question, sir? Online? Don't like the one. You're not saying Instagram, you're not. Don't be afraid of technology. I think technology is also a product of human creativity and human intelligence. Okay, we just have to be ahead of it somehow or to reinvent ourselves when we are faced with this new technology. Pero hindi tayo yung susuko sa technology. It is good for us. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Come here. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, I'm curious now uh, regarding uh, uh, responsible architecture. Uh, actually, I'm refreshing to what that will transition from because uh, I mean, back way back in college, po, and up to when I graduated from the corporate world. So, the impression or perception of uh, in architecture is through codes lang, and guidelines or all uh, compliance. Ayan, parang pinapakita po how to really implement yung parang you do the work. It's not just based on design, but yung mga actual uh, practices and consideration. Ayan, uh, given the context po na, for example, as an architect working uh, in, a private, in a private industry, how would you uh, persuade uh, responsible architecture when the cost comes in? Kasi, and, uh, parang uh, nice ko lang, parang nice type ko yung concept na yun. Although it's really important now that we're pushing a uh, sustainable development goal na parang at the same time, nagkakaroon ng dilemma yung society natin about it on how to really respond. Uh, given din yung mga uh, 
uh, echo threats and threats and emotion. So, parang, aside from sustainability, syempre, yung you know, consider on the economy. So, how would you really uh, push uh, not just uh, other professions, but really the whole society about uh, pushing responsible? Big question, big question. Thank you, huh? thank you for that effort to stand up and speak. And uh, before I answer the question, I will share with you the one of the most important skills an architect must develop is communication skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very, very important capacity to speak, express, etc. You don't have to be bolero like me, but you know, uh, be able to speak your, your mind. Now, going to that, no? uh, responsible architecture, reading architecture, cost. You know, there is what I do some many times is that I don't even I tell the client that I'm going to do the, for them a greenhouse. Mm. It will cause a lot of discussions. I just do it. Even the safety fa fa factors, even the even the uh, accessibility factors, I just do it. You can actually do that because it's actually if you put it in a different perspective, it is actually your duty to do it. Yes, by law. Diba? By law, then you go beyond that. So, in other words, you don't even have to tell them. Many of the projects I've done, the art, the client doesn't know that it's actually a green building until somebody brings it up. Have a, I did a bed and breakfast in Pauai, in Opus Norte. I just did it. Green architecture, orientation, cross ventilation, etc. I didn't tell the client anything about it. And then one day he came to me, he said, Mike, you know, the people who come here, Pawai is very hot, huh? They're wondering why in the dining room, we just set up aircon. It's relatively cool. Then I explained to you that I must have been this way, that the Southeast comes in here, goes through that pole, etc. Et oh, why did you tell me that? I love if I started discussing that with you, you would say no. Eh? So, I'm <laughs> okay. So, I'm sharing you real life experiences, no? because sometimes you talk about Oh, uh, like Mr. Client, we need to put a ramp. That's a code jam. Ako, mahal man lang ang ramp. Bayaran lang natin yung ano. Uh, Municipio, no? So, just do it, no? Don't even uh, discuss it, no? So, you have to play break by ear, but essentially, all I've mentioned here about responsible architecture is actually your duty. You should actually do it without even telling them that you're doing it. But you can highlight it if you like. Especially if you feel that, ah, medyo... Bata to, alam niya, mahilig siya sa sustainability. Then you mention it, he'll be proud of his structure. But if you think that he may not understand it, go in with that. Because that's a piece. You know that that building is actually contributing less to carbon footprint. So, don't worry. When you're young, study everything. If you feel that it may cause a long conversation, discussion, and argument, just do it. Anyway, <laughs> It's actually your responsibility. Yeah, tama. What you don't know won't hurt you. But later on, when they discover it, natutuwa sila. Actually, I told my client also that the same guy in wife. Actually, I didn't tell you right away because I asked, actually wasn't sure it was, it was going to work. It's <laughs> <laughs> You know, each one has a microclimate. So you experiment. When you're experimenting, don't tell them you're doing it. It's a case in the in the Okay, so yeah, anyway, that's Do what you have to do. And if you think it you can tell it to the client, tell him, but if not, you don't have to tell him. Tell him. That's part of good design. All right. So uh gumagamit pa kayo ng mga parang uh environmental software, yet mga parang ladybug, stuff like that, or we just do it old school na whatever you learn from the books that's been You know, may mga parang sunlight analysis. Yung mga presentation. Before sa office kami, may presentation kami. May parang 20 pages, parang may parang sun at glass. May kita mo yung mga red red na ganyan. But temperature, do you, do you use that? Or you just like practical stuff? This is the tried and tested thing. Yeah. I did before the computer was invented. <laughs> So I do it old school. Matter of fact, if those of you have heard my 10 steps to sustainability, I actually use that to present my projects to convince the client that it's, it's green. 
let the light in. The natural light. Block the sun, mainit, etc. So I do I, I do it old school. I don't have all this technology. And I thank God that uh, I live during the era now. <laughs> it's going to be it's more complicated now. But I'm sure it's it's good. I, and I've seen a lot of people do it. But you know, I practice by just simply following the basic rules of the intensive sustainability. I can convince them and they like it. Smart fact, when I presented the 10 steps of sustainability to one of my projects. Who was getting a loan from IFC for their, their roots? The IFC representative liked it so much that he asked me to repeat the presentation when the IFC officials came in. And I think it was the time when they were trying to look for a simple way to go green. Yeah. And that was the beginning of Edge. So I somehow, a simple approach to going green. Can you show it here? Ten steps. Yeah, ten steps. It's not. It's, it's, it's not an older time. version. Uh, it's an older version. I reduced it to two. But uh, it's very simple. Right? Lock the sun. One. Number two. Let the light in. Number three. Catch the breeze. Number uh, four. Nakamana ako eh. Kasi nakaroon na nung second version na eh. It's so simple, no? That yeah, that's even student. a client who doesn't know anything about architecture, yeah. we agree, no? Oh, black sun, bakit, bakit? Baka mainit sa west. Tama, sa east. Mama, architect, tama, no? So, let's be right away, no? Let the light in. Oh, libre na naman yung day lighting, di ba? Yes. Oh, pero yung pasok natin sa north and south. Ah, okay. Amrihan, nabagat. Please, di ba? It's so simple. Actually, I crafted that in the beginning of my advocacy because my initial advocacy was enough now. Is to make green so accessible, mm -hmm. so easy that every single project, no matter how small it is, yeah. is green. Yes, yes. Right? So, no, sorry, ah. Ano, hindi ako lumaki sa computer. Hanggang sketch up na ako. How about you, AK? Do you... Bata to, eh. Do you use all the programs? Um... <laughs> Urban planning. Uh, pero yung um yung sinasabi nga na natawag sa lady bug. <laughs> right. uh, um so in in my graduate studies, no, tinuro at kami no um energy modeling, no. Um and I think ano isa ko sa mga advocates na it should be taught yung i find ano the simulation tools uh -huh. very fun simulation. and it should be taught sa architecture level even for ano undergrads no kasi especially yung mga ano ano ba yung mga tinuturuan mo gen alpha na yata sila yung mga may gen z's and oh then gen alpha um, nalimut ako pero hanggang 2013 na pinanganak yung Gen Alpha na yun. Um, I realize mas mabilis ang pick up nila sa technology eh. Um, with, with ano, with digital tools. Kasi still yun yung mga pinanganak na may iPad, may phone. So it's so natural for them. And I think na sa simula pa lang, you teach them the simulation tools that, so that they can see um, what are the consequences if you have windows facing this way or that? Um, and it becomes integral and it becomes fun. Come on in architecture. You have a question, yeah. President, wow. Chapter wow. President Art Ar 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 uh, really? Uh, you mentioned, sir, that you design it. No, design. Design. I design. Uh, I, get, I get your uh, uncle to build for you. Ah, uh, okay. Change question. question. <laughs> so, sir, you, um, you were talking about the design, planning, site planning, or architectural, in the context of the site. Now, do you require, in terms of the field, do you have, have learned or 
are requiring contractors to be very good because they're to, ad to adapt a certain process. So at least the construction or the build is a little bit more greener or a lack of term more sustainable. Like let's say, the mga patunog, mga AAC blocks, mga less, uh, less wastage, uh, less, you, when you go to the site, better renovations, as much as possible, you don't throw away or you try to reuse your mobile from the that's uh, existing building. You do things like that. But you require those simple, applicable things in construction. It depends on the project and the contractor. For example, uh, one of the projects we did it involved a an old house, and then we were going to build a new structure. So what I told the contractor is there, dismantle the old building, not destroy it. Put it aside, put the, all the details. Then we use that in the new building. For example, yung mga sidings, we started creating buffet tables out of it. We started creating uh, decor on the walls, etc. No? So it depends on the project. No? Now, with respect to requiring the contractors to green the construction, I can only do that via the specifications, okay, the materials I specify, etc. But it's very hard for me because I'm not the builder. It's very hard for me to tell them, wait, yung mga pa ako, nakakalab dyan. These type of things, huh? or wastage, etc. No? It's not easy to control the contractor. Uh, so that, on my side, that is a, a failure on my side to be able to transform the construction into green. Because I just pure design na kami. Of course, when you go to the site, we, we suggest some things, like for example, you know, wastage, etc., minimize wastage or recycling certain things, etc. But at the end of the day, it's the lookout of the contractor. But that's not the idea. No? I think tama, tama ka. it's good to control them. But in my case, uh, since small office na kami, we're not able to control everything in the construction site. Say, bang sistema yan. It's a contractor. We, we, we do not have control over the people. Also, so pero maganda. It's fine. Maganda yung design build. Control na dumala. Architect Mike. So, so being a green architect, parang can you like charge a premium for that sa architecture piece nyo or parang ano lang siya, value add na lang siya? How, how, how do you parang do you like oh I'm architect Mike I I'm very well known for architecture. <laughs> I can charge 50%. No, I don't charge a premium on that. Because I always believe that green architecture is a standard approach to all of the Besides, I'm good over Cheers, 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 cheers. Wow. Sorry, I have a question. Sorry, I have a if you will see, type Google nyo, uh, UP study ng, ng suicide rate ng Greece. I think nasa plus 60% eh, from both sexes. Uh, pag, uh, I think 2013, tapos ngayon nasa 21, uh, I think nasa 17 na siya. So, mataas po kasi talaga. But the reason why I'm asking was this, I, I did have a client before na school yung, yung papatayo. But then again, the problem with the school is that they have no study of of uh, students who are actually committing committee suicide and that would be every cent. So, binigay sa akin yung dilemma. Actually, I don't know how to approach it. Number one, I don't understand. Kasi hindi naman po ako, I think I am affected in my mental health in a way, but I can handle it. But siguro, mag-iba dun sa mga bata na lumaki na sa gadget and sa Facebook. Uh, if, if you would see probably the documentary in Netflix, yung social dilemma, yeah. Sinabi dito kasi yung yung ano yung apply rate si secret uh, sa sa ano sa US. So pareho din sila in parallel with the, the, the studies here. 
Ang question ko po sa inyo, how can we probably equate a good design for the welfare of those people who are actually having mental health? How will you equate that to an effective design in terms of the interior space or probably the exterior space or so in your thoughts? Great. You know, whenever TC students approach me for this is consultation and their thesis project has something to do with mental health, I always tell them that's the most difficult project because the people who use the facility does not think properly. So how can you address that? Actually, challenge talaga yan. How does an architect through design address these issues? No? Personally, I would address it from the safety point of view first. Because at least from architecture, make sure that they talk about, I was doing a school uh, for girls, three floors long, no? and then I put the 900 mm uh, railing. Sabi ng teacher ng, ng school, uh, school people, architect, you have to make it higher and make sure that there's no way that they can actually climb. Bakit? Kasi tumatalon yung mga babae. Pag-busted sila, mga love problems sa sila. So, sa akin, immediately we can address it from the safety point of view. Pati yung, so yung railings na would, so that they cannot actually climb over. No? So, imbis na horizontal yung accent mo, magiging vertical na yan, no? And at a higher level, no? It's really difficult, no? I don't have an instant solution to that. But you know, anyway, just for discussion. I think uh, it has more. It is more to do with the formation of the children while they're still young. Earlier, I was sharing my three rules of life. Sharing, sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How do you how do you keep how do you keep going like me at this age? No, still being driven to do whatever I have to do. At long roads, lang yan. Keep thinking. Keep moving. Keep believing. Keep thinking. Always think about something. Kaya, hanggang ngayon, nag-evolve pa yung mga ideas ko, no? I keep on posting things in Instagram. Follow. <laughs> keep moving. That's why I'm still hiking up to now. The fish, your body has moved. Keep believing. Always hope. I, that's the harder part. How do you instill hope in the younger people that problems are not the end of everything? I do not know how to do it, but somehow... They have to understand the concept of hope, that there is a future, that problems are part of life, and problems can be overcome. Yeah. 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 Somehow, the solution lies along that line rather than pure architectural solution. So then, as architects, we just try to make sure as much as possible, as much as possible the safety, so that they don't uh, fall, they don't uh, jump, etc. So yeah. Pero malaking problema talaga yan. Somehow it has to do with the personality and you have to instill values back into the school. Better if you start them younger. Anyway, for those of the academy, you have to sort of share that with the people. No? The problems are part of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can be overcome. Yes. You just have to be patient and have hope. Wow. Amen. 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 So, very interesting, Architect Mike, and thank you for that question and thoughts. So, in may I, if I may share my thoughts on it, is this is actually how I see technology as a threat. Yeah. And how the younger generation perceives life through the digital space, right? And they get so disconnected with what real life has to offer, which is community and connections, yes, yes. right? And we all have a human responsibility to be humane, to care for each other, to bring hope to each other's lives. And very interesting, Architect Mike, when you said um, your three rules of life to think, believe and move. 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 Yeah. So very touch your grass. Yeah. Touch your grass. Touch the grass. Feel, feel the wind in your breeze. Yeah. Don't stop living in the digital space. 
Like our generation, nasa Facebook yan. We didn't. We were outdoors most of the time. We were with people. We were playing. We don't care. We have safety, safety. That's our generation. There were no computers and phones. We were always outside, no? relating with people, and that made us happy. And uh, grounded in reality. Okay, thank you. So, is there a question in here? In doing more controversial, from Joanna Malamu um, from Facebook. Hi, in terms of sustainability, what do you guys think of engineers, Dater Young's Monteraza? Oh, si Kumulong Sasagod! Si Cox! Si Cox! Si Cox. <laughs> 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 Ayun dito! 
Oh, magkano muna tayo? Magkano? Mahaba ba usapan ko? Beer pa, beer pa. Beer pa, beer pa. Sino ba si Box mo? What's what? Sige nga. Uh, actually, tinanong ko nung isang sudyan ka sa akin. Unang-una, kailangan ko alamin kung kailangan ko pa talagang sumagot ka. Okay. Unang-una kasi, wala naman ako sa program na mag-start. So, and I don't think I'm in a position to somehow uh, push some point pointers para itulak sa kanilang utamang na or mali. But the way I understand it, this is a composition of good practitioners and uh, somehow they have their own study with it. So sa madaling sabi, I'm, I'm glad that for the project, if, if it will push through, then they elevate somehow the development of architecture in the country. Kung hindi naman, I mean, probably good effort for them. Baka may mali dun sa study or what. Pero sa position ko kasi, I just celebrate uh, of the opportunity that they have as a market. Rather than sabihin natin na, may mali yan, patung-patungin natin, we don't understand the, the starting point and the end point of the study. So probably wala. Well, that's right now. Very diplomatic. Very diplomatic. How about you, Earth Stein? No comment, but anyway. <laughs> no, I respect whoever designed that. They have their own approach. They have their own analysis. They have their own studies. And even that poster, the post, it looks similar to another project. I even dispel that because you know each site has a different parameter. Mm -hmm. You put the slope in, they come up with a yeah. terrace solution. You can come up with that terrace solution in any yes. mountain slope or hillside. Diba? So, sa akin, it's okay. No? I'm no, not against it. So, I think it's okay. No? I mean, uh, of course, if you ask me to say sustainable, then you have to explain the project more to me. No? What is sustainable there? I cannot just say, no, it's not sustainable. No? I don't know yet the parameters. Bakit no? they're hard to say the water, but the day orientation. No? So we don't know. No? So it's not easy to just make a quick judgment without knowing the yeah. background. But I respect their approach. I respect the design. How about you, AK? Um, so I was um, actually you know, at the height of that, I know, and in Kalyan, as well. So another, um, so ang ano nung Monterazas is that it's inspired by the mountain, Banawe Mountain. Right, sir. Banawe, right, there it is. Um, and nagkataon, I, I was also looking at another project. This one is yung, sa ano naman siya, yung uh, Chulalong Corn University Centenary Park. Um, and ang nagbilip nito is a landscape architect, uh, land process. And one of their inspirations also is the rice terraces. Um, but like, magkaibang project. Kasi the, the, the Chulalong Corn University Centenary Park, it's not a residential. It's a meant to be a museum and an, another shop, water retention fund. No? But when you inspiration is a rice terraces, nandun talaga. Kasi um dun sa park merong ano may plant may ano may planting no so it's making agriculture look um using technology to elevate agriculture and at the same time elevate the public ground kasi yung park i think this park um is around parang for I, I'm, I'm not sure kung tama yung basko pero parang Four hectares. Kasi ang problem ng Bangkok, na, mag, na, na problem din natin ng Manila is flooding. So ito, ginawa ito para yung tubig pupunta sa kanya, i-collect niya, and then the water is recycled. And at the same time, um, na ano, uh, may ano, may planting talaga, no? may, may element of agriculture. Then may part pa nakakatuwa mayroon pwede kang mag-water bike and dun sa area, may area ka pwede mag-water bike and by doing that, parang na-aerate mo yung water which helps the, na, na ano yata yung soil, magiging more nutritious. So, and then looking at um, the Monterazas by Slater Young, well, hindi nga masyadong, um, yung kasi nakikita natin, it's ano eh, parang pang-selling na eh. 
no it's um it's not really giving us the detail uh -oh. i mean sige um it's a uh, it's parang on the surface level nakikita natin parang nakikita natin na direct copy na on the side of the mountain nga pero um hindi tayo nabibigyan ng iba pang details no na aside from looking like terraces ano pa yung ano pa yung ano, features nung um development and then sabi nga natin we cannot judge without being um logical about it so on the surface level makikita natin na it's a copy of uh, of the rice terraces but if we want to have a more um technical discussion about it maybe they can uh, maybe slater y'all can present because i think invite 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 they underwent um 300 revisions and he has to man the necessary consultants no? so maybe there is some um, some benefit in it no? so um and i think it, it will only make the profession it will only make the profession grow if we have conversations now what that we bash again without knowing what's in it no mali mo merong ano kasi i, I went hindi ko yung website pero ang nandun kasi it's ano eh for buyers na bata ang pinakamura is 50 million <laughs> yun so i think that's kung di ba kung if uh, advice ba is later <laughs> siguro um, if you want, no, maybe you can divulge what, what are the other features of the of the project that makes it conducive, that makes it green, that makes it sustainable. Um, without, ano, yung, kasi ngayon parang pang commercial siya, to gather, to, ano, gather in there. Can invite this architect, my architect, siya. Thank you. Thank you, Cox, Architect Cox, Architect Mike, Architect AK, for your answers. So, can we have one more at one more question before we close the session? Yeah. Say internet, Facebook. Yeah, America. All right. So, thank you, thank you, Architect Mike and AK. May I present to you the certificates? <clears throat> yeah, certificate of appreci appreciation for architect Mike Guerrero and architect AK Dorodan for sharing your time, wisdom, and architectural ex expertise as our guest speaker with the topic Transitions Green Architecture to Responsible Architecture. Given this 26th of September 2023 during the chapter general membership meeting held at Magna Mag Market Cafe in Quezon City. My Metro Manila, our chapter is with you in your vision of creating better design and built environments. So thank you, architect Mike. Thank you. Thank you. So we have, we have notebooks then for you. Wow. Yeah. With our logo. With the chapter logo. With our chapter logo, yeah. Not the president. Yeah. 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 Okay. Bye. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Final words. Well, final thoughts. Next month. After, next month. After the next month. Final thoughts. My post evaluation again of our. As we see, and. Um, and final thoughts. Um, sa mga uwi sa Malayo. Take care. Take care. And 
Exactly what is expected of us. And responsible, responsible architecture is simply a nice, nicer word to call due diligence. Okay, we owe uh, society the best structures, the best built environment, and the ones who are going to design it is us. Therefore, that is a big responsibility. If society has to be improved, then it is up to us to improve it through the built environment. And then one last thing. Don't worry, be happy. We can overcome any problem which technology is facing us, the engineers are facing with us, etc. etc. That's it. Creativity, we will survive. Thank you. Thank you, Architect AK. And our again, I'm Bernie Loxian and Richard. And thank you for the, joining our Archie Hustle. Good night, guys, and stay tuned for our upcoming events for next month. And yeah, October.